Hi, good evening. It's time for Hold No Bars with Manzoor Nadir on your favorite station, MTV. Yes, MTV. Tonight, um, what's happening with the sign, man? Kevin is a little bit upside it down, slanted. Okay, let's keep the sign. That sign basically says turn down your volume on your TV when you're calling in. Good, okay. Good, so let's start here. Seems like every single week we have an elections in the Commonwealth country where we come on the program. And yet we can't have the elections in Guyana after almost one year of no confidence motion. Today is what the 13 and 8 days time. The, it would have been the first anniversary of the famous no confidence motion which was passed in our National Assembly. Okay, so we have some challenges. So yesterday, Britain had its general elections. And um, I want Kevin to put up a couple of videos. Um, pictures, sorry, first of all, we'll see some pictures. Um, three different forms. This form here in the United Kingdom, it goes to every household, right? And it goes by the mail. And you fill in the information basically pertaining to who is living at the location, their age, and so forth. And this is used to verify on their national register of registrants, um, the persons who are on their citizenship and Commonwealth citizenship roles. So Kevin, there are three pages on that. They send you a notice, um, a notice, first and second reminder, and if you don't fill it out, they, there is a thousand pound penalty, right? So Kevin, you can roll that through. That's um, their way of keeping their database of citizens and electoral roll up to date and verify. Okay, yesterday, yes, parliamentary elections in the United Kingdom. Next picture, Kevin. Okay, so there's a polling station in the UK. It was a little bit cold. And uh, there is a gentleman standing at his polling place. No lines. There is uh, that young man who a few months ago had sent us the poll card. Remember um, five weeks ago when the elections was uh, announced in the UK, this gentleman sent his poll card. Well, that was him at the polling station yesterday. Again, peace, no lines, civility. Um, I don't think that's first world country behavior. That's human behavior, not first world. Okay, next picture, Kevin. It's a video. Okay, so I don't know if Kevin can turn that around a bit. Um, Kevin will spin that around. Um, and this is just in front of the polling booth. Now you, you go in and what is happening here, there's a conversation between a polling official and the voter, a very um, friendly exchange. It deals with instructions for voting. And you can take out a picture. You can take the video, right? There's no security. There's an honor system there. That's democracy in action. That is democracy in action. Yeah, so there's Kevin putting the exchange between the voter and the election official who's explaining. In the background, you saw some people leaving the polling station. Very orderly, you know, very, very orderly. And... Um, being banned by elderly people too, you see? Thanks, Kevin. Um, so there we go. That was yesterday. That was one voter sending us pictures, a very, a very um, faithful fan of Hold No Bars. Okay, Kevin, the next one. Okay, this picture I got from that same voter, right? And I got it about um, 
just about, I think polls closed in England at 7 o'clock their time, and in a matter of about four hours, the election results were announced. So this was about, I saw this at 5 o'clock when I woke up, but I saw the, um, the video post about, uh, the Times stamp on it was about uh, 3 something in the morning. So literally in the space of about 4 hours, the results came in. Next, next picture, Kevin. Here it is, it was a landslide victory for uh, the incumbent Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Britain, and this how she is showing is how the map changed conservative. Conservative got almost an 80 seat majority in the house, right? Now the next, the next picture, Kevin, okay. So by 5 a.m. our time, which would have been 9 o'clock, there was even a detailed analysis of the results. Next picture, Kevin. Including why um, persons voted how they voted. And there's a little bar graph at the um, top right of the corner, it shows that the people who voted for Britain to exit immediately the European Union, um, they increased in numbers. And so the uh, Conservative Party is under the current Prime Minister Boris is um, pro-Brexit and so he gained a lot of support. And it shows that um, in both labor strongholds, those who favored uh, remaining in European Union, even in among those. But they, they had, for me, what was important here is within hours, there was already the analysis of the reasons why. Next picture, Kevin, right? So, um, Okay, hold that one there, Kevin. Then we can go back. Hold that one. I'm going to come back to that. Um, yes, you can put me back on now. Thanks. Okay, so that was the British elections. 42% um, of the popular vote went to the Labour Party. But because of constituencies, they got like 364. They increased, they increased their um, seats in Parliament uh, by... I think over 40, 42, but they now have an 80 seat majority. And that majority was in favor of Britain leaving the European Union. Just as I am promoting that we leave CARICOM. We leave CARICOM. We're not leaving the relationship with our sister and brother countries in the Caribbean, but we're leaving CARICOM, right? And I'll, I'll have a program on economic integration, the reasons for it. Having gone through and supported economic integration because of the greater economic benefit that is supposed to accrue to the entire block, the why it's not working is because the disruption it is causing in so many countries. But we're going to leave that for another program. The why I'm raising this British elections again. And please, if you're gonna call me and tell me that's first world country, don't call, I'll cut you off, right? Because third world countries is not, uh, what is the word? Destined to be dictatorship. And first world countries, democracy. Democracy is a system that is inherent in every decent citizen. Any decent citizen has democratic principles embedded in his or her core values. Core values. So here we have David Arthur Granger and his government still can't tell us definitively that we're going to have these elections, but I feel we're going to have the elections because we're seeing 
all the signs of it. Overnight, in several areas of the country, the APNU flags are now flying, great, good for them. And um, January 10th has been announced as nomination day. The People's National Congress, the, major, the major partner in the coalition, uh, the coalition has announced January 3rd as the kicking off of their campaign officially. January 3rd. Now, we still haven't resolved issues at GCOM pertaining to the voters list. And that number that you saw just now, and Kevin will put it up back right now for me. Okay, this is saying that, look, um, let me just pull this up on my computer here. It's saying that there are 20,556 persons which GCOM wants to put onto the revised list of electors, something called the RLE. I'll explain that. But according to them, in Region 1, right, um, there are 856 new registrants. In Region 2, 1,496, right? If you can see it properly there, Region 3, 3,778. East Coast, 2,769. East Bank, 2,092. Georgetown, 4,057. Kevin, you might have to go to the next one, thanks. Good. Region 5 has 1,159. Region 6, 2,446. Region 7, 346. Region 8, 173. Region 9, um, 336. And, um, and region 10, 1,048. Giving you a total of 20,556. Now, this is what, the new have heard Dr. Chagdio uh, former President, His Excellency Dr. Barachak, you speaking about this. Now, this 20,556 names that are new registrants, they're coming from a house to house registration that was fraught with issues, problems. It never had scrutineers from all sides. Our dear chairperson, Justice Claudette Singh, vitiated the elections before by because one voter Esther Pereira said the voter ID card was against her constitutional right but now Justice Singh I understand is voting with the government commissioners to include these 20,556 names on the new list that will come out, which is called the revised list. We had the preliminary list, and onto that prelimi preliminary list of 640 something thousand people will be added, 5,000, right? And then they want to put on this 20,000 names. Now, 20,000 is about uh, three seats, right? This, 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 the first issue is not properly verified. Now, all that the PPPC commissioners and the PPPC is saying, look, you have said you've registered 20,000 people in two days and three days, right? You have 20,000 names. This is a two or three day exercise. It's not in one place. It's throughout the whole country. Get the party scrutineers and your GCOM officials and go and knock on every door. You can do this in a few days. You don't need a week or three weeks. You don't need to sample. But you can physically go and knock on every door. And if the person can't present themselves, then they can't go on the list. Right? Which is fair. Here is what Justice Claudette Singh did. For one person, knock out the whole elections. Right? was 97 elections but now she's prepared 
according to my information, I could be wrong, she's prepared to do a sample on Vincent Alexander, the government member, is like the spokesperson now for GCOM. He is the epitome of intelligence. He is as wise as Solomon. So Vincent Alexander speaks. So he wants, they say they want to do a sample. I think a sample of 10%. And I don't know how a sample is going to transfer to every single voter. Because remember for one vote, for one vote and an ele entire election was tossed out by Justice Singh. Now, she want, they want to take a sample of 2,000 people and leave 18,000 to do their own. You can, you can physically go in three days max and knock on every single door. Every door, right? So, I can't see that being unreasonable. Justice Singh is supposed to sit there not as an arbiter between the two alone, but as a consensus builder. So low and field contract was renewed, right? With four persons voting for renewal and the op um, opposition commissioners, the PBPC commissioners abstaining. So here is low and field. Low and field contracts expires after March the second. And this is what Vincent Alexander prefers. He says, look, if this man is on the duress, he can't do a good job. So you need to renew a contract for another three years. Right? So this low and field was supposed to be this again I'll use paragon of professionalism. Good? So, but on the duress, he can't perform professionally because he doesn't know if his contract would be renewed after the elections, right? What happened is, didn't they do the same thing to Gokul Buru? Had the elections? Yeah, but somehow, what's good for the goose ain't good for the gander. Low and few can't work on the duress, so he needs to have a new three years contract. Good, and so they renew this contract. I understand that um, there was some issue with respect to mo promoting people from inside, because many of those from inside used to provide shady answers to the commission, especially when questions were asked of the government commissioners. Um, so. They can't verify this. And Justice Singh is supposed to be a consensus builder. But we've seen major decisions now voting taking place. So I'll now open up the lines. I know I've taken up about 20 minutes of your time. Um, you can WhatsApp me, 6819312 number, Kevin. That one is working today, All right? It's up there. You can also WhatsApp on the cell. Um, uh, puzzling, puzzling. Anyway, we got the list from GCOM of the 20,556 names, and we'll try and ensure that we can do our work. And David Arthur Granger, right now, it seems that you're not even prepared to take a little of the embarrassment out of your eyes. I don't want to use a more, a stronger word. But here, man, get on with this thing now. Law and Field had a, a perfect list up to April the 30th. You didn't have the elections. And you're still trying all kinds of shenanigans, you know, to do whatever kind of manipulation you want. So you said you're an intelligent leader, you're a love leader, David Granger, that, you know, you could win any elections and you're going anyway just yet. Gosh, with all that pomposity that you have, pump up the ceremony, man. Get on with the elections. Stop having your commissioners at GCOM dilly-dally and don't tell me 
that they don't serve, they serve their as individuals alone. They represent the coalition. They represent the coalition views. And you can't tell me differently, right? Desmond Hyde can be wrong. Cherry Jagan can be wrong. So, um, sorry, I forgot to check the lines. Let me just check. Clearing all of them now. Yeah, so the lines are open and um, we await your calls. We can talk about the British elections. We can talk about these elections that are supposed to be coming up. Campaigning will start as soon as the new year breaks. It has already started. <coughs> the flags are going up. The house to house work is happening. Um, some of the tensions beginning to build in some communities. So, um, yes, it's Christmas season and some people say election season is silly season. I don't know what it's silly season, but it's an important, uh, an important activity in the life of any democracy. The citizens' right to vote at definite periods, um, free and fairly, for whoever they wish to run the country. Right? And so far, we've seen David Granger and the coalition government imposing themselves on the nation for the last eight months. I, I, I watched yesterday as the flags were going up for APNU. Now, when I saw the flags, these flags could not have been done in the last two or three weeks, right? So, I saw the flags, it had to be designed, it had to be printed, it looks like um, work done in a major manufacturing country, and, um, and shipped in. To, for a container to come from that country to Ghana, it takes about 45 to 55 days. Now that's assuming the shortest possible time, 45 days, a month and a half. A month and a half, we were still getting news from the coalition and the APNU camps that there was no deal. And APNU threatening to go to elections by themselves. But all of the campaign material for APNU and the coalition was already done. So all this dance that they had between Kemraj and the AFC and Granger and APNU and the PNC was all a little show. Because you would see the paraphernalia coming out, the paraphernalia, I laughed when I started seeing some of it because I know the time lag between conceiving the branding for the campaign and the production of the collateral material, right, has to be like a no confidence motion, at least three months, right? So this was all a big show between APNU and the AFC about not having a deal and who threatening to leave and whatever. Good? So look out. Um, for more deception as the campaign um, rose, rolls into top gear or high gear. And um, we're going to see all the promises. From your end, I know at the PPPC level, very early on, the PPPC was speaking to the issue of the good life was only for the few ministers, the lowering of taxes, the removal of some of the taxes imposed by this administration, uh, the issue of stimulating the economy with transportation, transformational programs, including, as Dr. Evan Ali has said, some major pro mega projects, ICT and tourism being two of the lead sectors. Uh, while oil has now come on the scene, right, it has always been that we need to transform 
our economy and we need to rebuild massive infrastructure to gear up Guyana for greater economic activity. And that was without oil. The big issue with oil is that um, oil perhaps is already being pumped. And um, we know that the first million barrels will roll out and go to Texas, where Exxon has its fancy facilities. Not a problem with that. Um, oil is trading right now at what, about 68, 69 US dollars. Projection is that in the next month or so, it'll be about 70. Uh, call is coming through. Hi, good evening. You're on the uh, air. Hi. Quite well. Um, I want to know if you'll get election for the, 20th, um, the second of March. Well, I was uh, I I wasn't sticking my neck out, right? Yes. I wasn't sticking my neck out. But what I'm seeing happening, a launch of the campaign on January third, the flagging started yesterday, day before yesterday for the afternoon, um, and they are still trying to uh, put unverified names. Yeah. yeah. So we're keeping our fingers crossed, though. But it's a very weird experience. Sure, man. Okay, so, uh, like so many other persons, that caller is concerned about whether we will have elections on March the 2nd. Okay, we have a few call um, items here. The retirement age for a public employee is 55. Um, what makes it different for some? Politicians must go also. This is a must. The Constitution needs to be rewritten, right? Okay, so that's one view on the um, on the WhatsApp, right? Next one: Can we protest to the ABC committee concerning the inclusion of the list? We can protest for anything, right? Um, so those are two. The lines are open. Good. Yes, so whether we have elections, um, it's a good. Your guess is as good as any. And we're seeing some signs that they're preparing to um, go full blown into campaign mode. But of course, all that could be aborted too, right? Could be a strategy to pull out the PVP, let the PVP use up their material. The PNC having a ton of material in reserve when the P they delayed elections and they, the idea is they could keep or catch the PPP napping. So that might be one of their thinking too, right? But you know, I last night, sorry, this morning when I looked at the results of the British elections, you know, the die is cast for the coalition. The die is cast. So any all the manipulations they do and all of the other shenanigans they are going to employ, once elections are free and fair, I think their die is cast. Britain. Britain voted by a slender margin. I think it's just over um, 50 percent, 50 point something something percent in a referendum to leave the European Union. David Cameron, who was pro-EU, was the Prime Minister, and he said the referendum is also, or was also, a uh, referendum on his leadership. And so when the results came out, Cameron tendered his resignation as Prime Minister. Gosh! Wonder when we're going to become like that in Guyana. Tendered his resignation. And then the Conservatives elected Theresa May. Britain wanted to leave. For whatever reason, and all the different workings within the Conservative camp, I don't know the intricacies of that. But the bottom line is, she failed to deliver on Britain leaving the European Union within a certain time. And so her party also rebelled. 
and she was thrown out. She had to quit um, as leader of the party and as prime minister, Theresa May. And so you have, and then they have Boris. I never remember Boris's last name, right? Um, so Britain delay in leaving Brexit cost at least one prime minister her job, right? That's Theresa May. So she dilly dally. Uh, the current prime minister, good. The current prime minister, he um, was pro leaving as fast as they can. And so he wanted a stronger mandate from the people of Britain. A stronger mandate from the people of Britain. I'm just trying to find this piece of news, which, um, yes, this piece of news here. Um, no, it's not in this piece, right? Um, it, so, the current prime minister, the incumbent at the time, he went to the polls with a message of needing a stronger mandate to pull Britain out of the European Union. And he got it. Peacefulness, transitions, casualties, persons who took the party, the labor leaders, will do the honorable thing and resign and hand over the leadership to somebody else within the Labour Party. But look what's happening here. And no confidence motion is passed. The president refused to acknowledge. He says he will call the elections when he thinks it's, um, it's fit and proper. Remember he had appointed a fit and proper chairman in James Patterson. But he basically, David Arthur Granger, basically said, look, um, yeah, no confidence motion, but I have concern about the list. 200,000 names were fake, or transactions were fake. I shouldn't say names because he said transactions. The list came out. All of us had a chance to look at the preliminary list of electors. Um, I didn't hear no objections. Instead, throughout the country, the PNC officials were objecting to whole villages of names. Right? Um, at random, and then not showing up for the hearing. You know. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hi, good evening. Go ahead. Hi, how are you doing tonight? All is well, man. All right. Yeah, I'll see you. You're, you're thinking of the British election. Nah, I'm yeah. just using that to show how. Um, yeah, yeah but maybe you say you don't want nobody to compare the election. As a third world, yeah, I want to hear that kind of thing. You want to hear it, but let me, let me show you. Let me, let, let, let me present the argument to you. Uh -huh. Right? Good. Now, what was the grievance that the British had with the European Union that they wanted to leave the European Union? You, you, you know that? Yes. You got any idea what was the grievance? I think I have a good idea. A good idea, Ari. Well, look at the grievance that they had. Mm -hmm. Let me just speculate a little. I might, might be right. But the grievance I think they had was migration. They didn't want this mass migration to happen. Mm -hmm. And if they were in the European Union, they mm -hmm. have to accept it. Mm -hmm. To prevent the mass migration and these migrants coming into their country, mm -hmm. they opted out mm -hmm. of the European Union, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we had Boris Johnson. Mm -hmm. Pro Brexit, mm -hmm. Greg uh, Jeremy Corbyn, mm -hmm. he wasn't so, uh, Theresa May, they weren't so uh, fond of it. Now, the, 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 their constituents, mm -hmm. in an effort to support the Brexit, mm -hmm. Jeremy Corbyn's or the Labour, mm -hmm. they sacrifice their vote. Mm -hmm and throw it, throw it behind Johnson or the Conservatives. Right. They gave, them, gave him critical support. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's what I'm showing you. What I'm going to try to compare to you, 
look at the mentality of these people that mm -hmm. they wanted an issue to be resolved mm -hmm. that this sacrifice their fidelity to a party mm -hmm. for just an issue now in this country we have a whole constitution being disrespected mm -hmm. right and the people sees no importance in 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 in, in supporting a, a particular situation mm -hmm. or giving support to, for a cause they Right? So right. they allow they allow the constitution to be disrespected. Mm -hmm. A certain political party could do whatever they want mm -hmm. and they are divided. So when you want to compare and say that there should not be comparison between these countries mm -hmm. or these first world or third world, there has to be comparison because the mentality the people them mm -hmm. determines that and the, the issues where they put. Mm -hmm. Together, right? Anyway, that's one of my points. I want to ask you something here, right? Mm -hmm. This goes back to the Chicon. Mm -hmm. Before Mr. Lewinfield presents his summation mm -hmm. to the chairman, mm -hmm. will the commissioners be in possession of all the statements of polls to verify his summation? Mm -hmm. And if not, the burden or onus is on the chairperson to wait until the commissioners have received. Mm -hmm. All the statement of polls, so as to be certain that low fee summation corresponds with their tabulation mm -hmm. before she signs off mm -hmm. on his summation. That's my question to you. If that 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 is the the sequence in which it will be done. Okay, I know that um, low field can't make the announcement. He can make the tabulation. And it's the commission will um, will do the final pronouncement, yeah, but right? Hear me, hear me. I'm hearing you, but let is she going to wait until y'all are in possession of all the well, statements of poll? Well, I want to believe. Yeah, I want to. Okay, I want to. I want to believe that um, they don't get every single statement of poll, right? Mm. I know that there was some talk about. One commission saying he had to add up and whatever, but what you what you are saying makes a lot of sense. And for the rational person, one would expect that all of the statement the poll should come in. It's gonna be under three thousand man and come on the desk according to the region. You go through region by region by region, add up, do your own adding up. The commission itself, check back signatures. You know, those things should happen. I think. Yeah, Madam so Chair. I was calling for the elections to happen. Mm -hmm. To me, that is not my concern. The elections could happen and people could go and vote. But if you don't have a uh, definitive and authentic and of, you don't have equity mm -hmm. in GCO, mm -hmm. right? It makes no sense because they are going to manipulate just like how they're trying to eliminate those, those 20,000 voters. Mm -hmm. And the chairman is actually. Uh, well, I know they're trying to eliminate. <laughs> they're trying to bring them in without proper verification. That's our concern. Yeah, but how could she? How could she allow that when she has vitiated a whole election for one person? You understand? Now she has twenty thousand person, and something is not something is not uh, right mm -hmm. according to her. Or, or, or reasoning something it, it, it you know it, it bring in a lot of suspicion I mean if yeah. you sit there and you and song and too sure mm -hmm. you could imagine what you're doing to the ordinary people right you know, and you, you, you're shaking people's confidence you know, and in the whole electoral system yes so anyway let me know what talk you know, more anyway thanks for that right great man yep. thanks good one of our regulars who have been making some sterling contributions to the program over the past few weeks. And listen, we don't call people, right? People call in. We hit the buttons at random. Yes, numbers show up, but I don't remember the people number. I like the numbers to show up because uh, if it's a private call, we um, could have issues when they start doing their own stuff and cussing up and so, right? So. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Um, 
answer. How are you doing? Good, man. Great. What the chap said makes a lot of sense just now. Mm -hmm. But one of the questions he asks is, you know, um, about people's, actually he said a different word, but I can't remember it. Mm -hmm. Conscience uh, for voting. He's not, Guyana ain't got the conscience for vote, man. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, it, love me if I make these two points. This is Go one, ahead. Eh? Um, right. Um, the vote strictly, um, no, it's a racial kind of situation, but Indians will be more democratic in the vote. Um, and I think the PPC running from this race, and I've been talking about this thing all along. I talked to Peter the other day, and the PPC are not taking this thing on 99% of the vote. That's why I tell you, I, I don't know if it's you or who attack. If PPC win or lose this election, mm -hmm. they are going to farm in this country and East Indian development. Oh, yes. yes mm -hmm. I think it's you, right? Last week. Right. And I am, I am passing that right now, you know, the whole computer followed because I read in a book on the, on the indentureship and reparation, and he'll finish. The whole mm. computer followed, the whole tap followed. So I didn't problem it when I listen. I, I didn't problem too because my computer went on a blink too. Right, here, no, but I able for pictures and I get back my documents, you hear? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm happy, that's why I ain't come through to you yet. Okay. Um, right, but I know that's a bad sign or a good sign. Mm -hmm. um, no, but I just tell you, um, we've seen these flags kind of all around the place, right? Uh -huh. And I have been talking to people. Look, I taught at Juji for many years. Mm -hmm. Right now, the, the faculty is up to medicine with Professor. Mm -hmm. um, probably you know me. Um, I don't recognize the voice. Uh, I don't recognize the voice. Right, right, right. I didn't have much talking here, but I know you very good. Thank um, you. All right. And the, the thing is that when you go on and you watch this thing, Guyana has had this authoritarian rule. Mm -hmm. Some people like to call it dictatorship. Mm -hmm. Since 1964 to now, under the PNC, 28 years ago, and they haven't been a change. And then man come out loud and tell all you. Mm -hmm. I'm falling, my protege man. Mm -hmm. So we didn't expect anything else but rigging, 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 rigging. Mm -hmm. And I don't think this election will be. I want to see what the ABC country is going to do. You understand? Because they just preach this democratic rule. Mm -hmm. Get all the elders and carry all the elders free. It's a mobile got submarine, you know. You've got to know if the expression of the air by submarines, too. Um, you may know, though. I spent a lot of years with it's a mobile, too, you know. Um, <laughs> they got some submarine as big as Guyana could carry all them like, in mm -hmm. 10 years. That's why they're hustling to get all them storage capacities. So they got freedom for the other one. Yeah, let me go back to what we did talking to. Right. So I don't believe, you know, that if it, this lady. I mean, you have a lot of differences, and you don't like hear these kinds of powerful talk. You like this, you know, moderation, this democratic talk, this kind of diplomatic talk. Um, is that how could Jabio and the mm -hmm. PPP put a woman who was initiated, mm -hmm. who appointed, who was part of the committee to appoint the man from um, Belize? Mm -hmm. She was part of that. She was mm -hmm. chairman of that commission. Mm -hmm. So as far as I concern, she is a member of the PNC herself. Mm -hmm. um, how could I allow a lady who got unilateral dispositions for be a chairman as she can what are you believe she can go in all your favor? Look, we see one shot right now, not so we should vote the PNC. Mm -hmm. So she should be she should got a balanced status. Mm -hmm. The PNC seems to be thinking at all. She does kind of probably she gets in the good life too. Um so that is the point, but this authoritarian rule is going to continue, and we got to stop it. And it's well, not going to stop by just simple I, I, I'm free happy. elections. Yeah. Ah, this is the point I want to make. Fair and free election doesn't guarantee, mm -hmm. right, a stable government or a government in favor of all the people. It's the institutions, mm -hmm. like the law enforcement, police, army, the judiciary state. Excellent oh, uh, point. The judiciary, two judges in the appeal court, because said 44 is an, uh, at the half of 65. So it shows the judiciary, and if you see some things, you know, at some of the, for example, Nandalal and some case when they, and they throw it out, the, the thing, uh, the, the, I mean, when you see the judiciary, the, the civil servant got since 1976, mm -hmm. ICG, 
the international committee had ruled about doing certain things to the police force and the army. PPP had 23 years. Look, I am very, I am very, you know, we said disgusted with the PPP right now. Because are you talking, talking and believe this is a democratic country? We never had democracy in Guyana. And I don't see we can have it under this guy. We got praise the God. Thank you. Great. Good. Sorry, um, I gave him a little while. He wanted to uh, express himself and he did make a couple of very good points. So let's hear from you. Uh, let me check the WhatsApp messages. Um, no WhatsApp messages tonight so far. We only had a couple of them and the lines are still going. We have just about um, 12 minutes remaining on the program and we should be able to take quite a few more calls. But again, we're talking about uh, what's happening within GCOM and I don't accept this fatalistic position that um, these people can break and we can't do nothing. We can do a lot, right? And uh, one of the things that we can do is to come out in numbers and vote. I've said it so many times, Minimize the rigging by maximize the voting. That's one. The second thing is, I'm, I'm continuing to promote the idea that uh, people should take pictures of the statement of polls that are put up outside of the polling place and send it to a site. And I wouldn't like for us, a political party, to do it. It has to be done by civil society. And um, I was having a chat last Sunday evening about um, the elections and one very popular medical doctor said to me, he says, look, people know how to use the turn on the location button on their WhatsApp. You can take a picture of that and statement of poll and send it to a site immediately that that goes out. We ask, we're saying people should go and vote early. So by six o'clock, there's nobody in the line. So counting can start immediately that polls close at six o'clock, right? Statement, the polls go up. So this medical doctor said, and what you want is more than one person taking pictures of the same statement, the poll. So if Manzoon or Dave pass and he take a picture and he send it, and then David Alexander pass, he take a picture of the same one. So you'll have multiple pictures of the same statement of polls and at the same time all the statement of polls up. So whatever happens, Loving Field trying to do outside, Guyanese inside Guyana, outside Guyana, the world will see what the true vote was. And I think that's an excellent, excellent um, comment and suggestion from my good learned friend. But I think it has to happen by civil society. Civil society got to lead the pro the, this process. Private sector commission combined with the um, with the media, right? Because uh, this is news with the media along with NGOs who, um, you know, a lot of NGOs do a lot of good, want to see a lot of good done, and um, all the do gooders we have. Come out, join. Let us ensure that we have the voted results counted, displayed, and tabulated. Counted, displays, displayed, and tabulated, right? But we're, we're fast approaching um, next, uh, what, 11 days, it's Christmas Eve. Then as soon as Christmas Eve and New Year's break, it's straight into the hectic campaign season. PNC launching on January the 3rd. Uh, we're going to get an official announcement from the PPP side. A lot of the other parties, the smaller parties, are making a lot of noise. We've seen a couple of paper tiger parties coming up. And some of them are now even coalescing. All that's good for democracy, the more the merrier. Um, so more, more persons can keep an eye on the statement of polls. But the bottom line is, if David Arthur Granger and company 
has an ounce of commitment to basic human rights and the right of a citizen to participate in elections at definite periods is one of the basic human rights. If they got they subscribe just a little bit of that, then we're going to have a proper elections. All of the foot dragging, the delay tactics, all of the manipulations that are being suggested, you know, should be out the window. You know, I've been saying counting down every single month, you know, for this year, how many countries have had elections, Commonwealth countries, com countries similar to, uh, to Guyana, coming out to the same past, right? We've had, you know, Australia, New Zealand, India, Botswana, Canada, Dominica, come out of Dominica, now uh, Britain, right? And we still stop fighting over, including, including persons who were supposedly registered without having the verification of the opposition scrutiny earlier. We're still arguing of bringing in 20,566 persons into the voters list. We're still fighting over that, you know. And the PVP is saying, look, I will bring in all of them, but let us go and knock on every door where the new registrant lives, and we can do that in less than a week. I say three days it could be done in, right? But no, the coalition partners want a sample to be done. And one of our, our callers, a few callers today, uh, spoke about that and the, vici the vitiating of an election because of one vote. So it's coming down to the festive time in full uh, swing shortly. And, um, and as I said earlier, into campaigning just after that. The lines are open, Britain, and our congratulations to the British people. Um, they voted heavily in favor of removing Britain from the European Union. And I'm sure that this is going to be one of the issues for Guyana and CARICOM. Now, I was, earlier when one, I took one of the calls, I was going to go into the issue why I supported large blocks of countries. And the basic theory behind it is that if you bring a certain set of markets together and you have the free movement of capital, the free movement of labor, um, you can have greater output, greater productivity, greater production. And so within the economic block, you can see a six to eight um, percent improvement in economic growth than if they individually operated. And so, you know, I did support that. Experience has shown, however, like in Britain, you have to give up too much sovereignty and decisions on your own people are now removed from your country and put in other hands. And one of the big issues that the British had was the loss of fishing rights. While one caller earlier spoke of being flooded with migrants, one of the other issues was loss of um, rights which you in enjoyed for centuries. And so your own people were being impoverished or deprived, maybe not impoverished, but deprived, and that opportunity went outside because of decisions outside of your own borders. 
and, and this is the same thing that's happening in Guyana with CARICOM. The very same thing. We have free movement of people. Republic Bank will bring in 130 um, Trinidadians to run an experimental platform. Uh, they didn't even try it in Trinidad, but they used the dumb guinea pigs in Guyana and they brought in a bunch of Trinidadians to run the system, right? Um, easy transition, not a problem, and the Guyanese has been suffering because of it. Republic Bank, as I've said to many of my friends who work there and the people, is the best of a bad lot. The best of a bad lot. And for a number of years, and I've been at that particular bank for over um, 45 years, the lines hasn't changed, you know, and the, hi, good evening. Okay, yes. So coming back to this economic integration, it was supposed to create more wealth from the same space and also provide more opportunities to the citizens. The problem is that the amount of displacement that happens within countries, the human anger, the human loss in terms of opportunities within certain space for the benefit of a few, that disparity, the economic modeling doesn't take into consideration. And for me, that is why Brexit happened, right? Yes, including in all that is being flooded with migrants. And this is our big fear that everybody will be coming into Guyana. Local content is an issue. And it's not only for oil, it's for other opportunities. You go to Trinidad, we couldn't export uh, poultry meat to Trinidad. Dio Singh and Ditko had set up state-of-the-art USDA certified poultry facilities. The Trinidad didn't accept it. Barbados limit our agricultural produce in. For two years, we had to fly in an officer here, station them here to go and visit farms and so, right? You, we suffered the, the consequences of the benches in both Trinidad and Barbados. You go to the Eastern Caribbean, if you want to own property or get into retail trade, you cannot do it unless you are from the islands. Hi, good evening. Hello, go ahead. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Oh, yeah, I just that. Okay, so um, we have, um, sorry, I hit the wrong button. Let me just check the WhatsApp message. Okay, yes. So these are some of the issues that cause people to want to start breaking away from the blocks. Trump said it. Trump said, look, I got to put America first. So WTO and all them rules they're imposing, it's been against us. Things haven't worked for us. I got to go back to what works for us. And I, you'll see that happening more and more because what we find is that the big economic blocks has to work for everybody and not a few alone. So we can talk more, we can speak more about that as we continue with whole no bars in future programs. But Kevin is signaling me it's time to wind down and wrap up. So on behalf of Kevin, the directors at MTV and on my own behalf, you have a great rest of the evening and thanks for being part of our program once again. Good night.